YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, back on Total War Rome 2, and we're going to do some more multiplayer. The last time you saw me play was against, uh, well, I mean, maybe it wasn't the exact last video. I don't know what order I'm going to put these up in. But uh, I'm going to play against this Leo guy again. I remember last time he's the one that brought the two giant fixed artillery pieces, the giant ballistas, and I uh, chain routed my army. And I was like, surely he's not going to bring the same army again, because he picked Rome again. And I was like, well, I'll bring Masegate because I feel pretty good matching up Masegate against Rome right now. Um, so I was like, uh, if he brings the same army, he'll be in trouble. And look at that. He brought a pretty close version of it. He brought a few extra spearmen, which I don't know what he thinks that auxiliary infantry are going to do against the Masegate, which is pretty much nothing. So this time, I was like, there's no way I'm standing in his cone of fire on those things anymore. So watch the approach I take. I split my army into two wings and immediately go outside the cone of fire of his giant ballista, utterly uh, making these guys utterly worthless. Their cone of fire is going to look something like this. Just drawing it out for you all, so it'll, it'll be something like that. So I'm going to move outside of his cone of fire. You can see he does get one volley off here, which actually doesn't kill any of my men. So these guys are like, oh man, somewhere between 15 and 1800 talents, I think. So now they're completely gone, and my opponent's spread pretty thin, and he's got a considerably large uh, nomadic cavalry horde bearing down on both flanks. And at this point, I'm feeling pretty good, because even without very good micro, I should be able to easily win this battle. Now, I brought noble horse archers instead of the standard ones. The reason I did this is because I was going to have plenty of money, and uh, these noble ones are better if you get into late game and you need them to drop into a melee fight. They'll be able to actually get some kills. Brought some cheap lancers to go on each flank to lead off the charge against any Roman cavalry, hoping that these guys can deal some damage off the charge with a trample. And again, now I've got my opponent fixed down two flanks, and his uh, ballista are going to be completely worthless. This is the proper way to deal with ballista. Not necessarily by bringing a step faction, but if you see it, immediately break up and move either all to one side or to both sides of the battlefield and just go around their cone of fire. Uh, this is why I don't ever recommend bringing fixed artillery unless you're going to use it in a siege battle because a city wall can't move, uh, but troops can move, so uh, fixed artillery would really be better suited to a siege battle. Here I've got my men on heavy shot, and I'm going to open up on these Sake Equites Extraordinary. And by getting this extra hit point damage early on, it's going to make the charge of my Step Lancers more damaging because these guys have already lost some of their hit points. And I'm going to bring in my Step Noble Lancers behind to finish the job. He's going to keep fleeing away. I want to drag his men plenty away from his uh, infantry support. Get some shots. You're seeing here getting some good shots in his Praetorian Cav too. And now I'll go ahead and turn around. I did do a uh, trample charge. Probably won't be super effective. Eh, it wasn't. Shouldn't be because I didn't get up to speed. Um, but it'll hold these Saki Equites. And then here I get a really nice trample charge into his Praetorian Cav and just actually kill a bunch of them. Uh, because their hit points had already been weakened by my horse archers. Then I'm going to move around, come from behind, and drop another charge on these uh, Praetorian Cav, which is going to pretty much finish them off. And then I've got my uh, Noble Lancers coming around. My opponent's pushing me on the other flank, so we're both having to micro on two flanks. So here comes a Noble Lancer charge from behind into the Praetorian Cav, and that's going to be devastating. And then same thing over here. Uh, I'm kind of losing one Step Lancer, but that's totally worth it to take down a Praetorian Cav. Yeah, and you can see my, my Step Lancers actually did a great job of just absorbing the initial charge and allowing my Noble Lancers to make out with almost no damage. And check it out, this Praetorian Guard getting ripped to shreds from every direction by Noble Horse Archers. So the Romans, probably somewhat um, reminiscent of Carre in this battle, being picked at from every angle by uh, Horse Archers. Not really their ideal scenario. On this flank, my opponent caught me a little bit off guard. So my uh, Noble Lancers got a little bit beat up, and this time I'm actually going to bring my Lighter Lancers in from behind. I'm going to get a couple of good trample charges here into the back of this um, Saki Equite. It'll just, or actually that's a, yeah, Saki, equi uh, Saki Equite, not extraordinary. They're not very extraordinary, apparently. And then I'm going to come into the back of this Praetorian Cab and finish them off. Um, so I get a waiver going there, and their numbers will start to drop. And then he did release his war dogs on one of my horse archers, which was a good move, but they were armored horse archers, and they're actually able to fight off the dogs fairly well. And then I just keep my horse archers moving, completely destroying that Vigile. And on this flank, his infantry is dead, and uh, his general was trying to chase me down, and he admits defeat. So, um, yes. So that is what you do to deal with artillery. Last time I did it really poorly, and felt like you all deserved a little bit better 
showing on how to deal with the artillery. Uh, and it doesn't, again, doesn't mean you have to pick a step faction, but just splitting up and going down the flanks, then you don't have to worry about it. Now, a little bit more about artillery. Let me let me show you a test real quick. So is, is artillery effective? Let's just run through a couple of quick tests. Um, I'll bring a scorpion spam. And why a spam here? Well, just, just so you all can see. I mean, if you bring a crap load of it, it'll generally help give you an idea of you know, how effective any given single unit is. And we'll just bring a whole bunch of Roman infantry because it's heavily armored and all that kind of stuff. It'll be a good demonstration. So here we go, Roman infantry, general, and then I'm going to give them a whole bunch of uh, uh, legionary cohorts. And I'll bring some armored legionaries too because these guys have really heavy armor. There we go. Um, so scorpions. Scorpions are actually a decent piece of artillery. These guys are pretty good against elephants, and they're pretty good against um, infantry that's in blocky formations. They're also quite good against cavalry. Uh, even when the cavalry's on the move, they're pretty good against it. So scorpions are a viable um, piece of siege equipment in my mind. Uh, now, that being said, uh, scorpions still are going to limit your movement. They're not as bad as some things, but that's going to be the one drawback to using um, artillery in my mind, is that it's always going to limit your ability to be mobile, and because you always have to protect it. If it doesn't get the kills that you need it to, then you just wasted money. Now, at only 500-something um, talents, the, the scorpions are not too terribly bad, but um, it's just something that you, you got to keep in mind when you're using this siege equipment. Are they almost trying to walk around my cone of fire? They are. Scorpion! Yeah, we'll see about that. So I'm going to move all my scorpions into a better position, which is going to take a minute. So when it comes to scorpions, um, definitely want to make sure that they're protected. Uh, you want to make sure that they're firing at the best targets of opportunity. So units that are in the blockiest formation, the biggest blobs, cavalry, elephants, those are going to be your targets with scorpions. Don't be targeting them at a thin line of infantry. And if your opponent has scorpions, guess what? Probably a good idea to spread out your infantry. Now, if you spread out your infantry, do remember that you're going to be very vulnerable to cab charges. So there is a risk in spreading out your infantry, but it's definitely the right way to go as far as uh, how to deal with um, minimizing the amount of damage that those uh, scorpions will do to you. Now, scorpions have a pretty quick refire rate. And hopefully my guys in the back are firing. They are. So getting a lot of fire here, and you can see that I'm going to kill a fairly substantial number of Romans, but infantry is just really not where scorpions are the best, because as you can see, they fly over the top of the infantrymen a lot. It seems like the shots run high. Depends on where they're targeting, I suppose. I mean, again, you're going to kill some, but I mean, you, look at that. I mean, complete scorpion spam, and I haven't killed a single unit of uh, Romans when it's coming up. So this will give you an idea that scorpion's really not the best at fighting infantry. They can get some infantry kills. They can be somewhat useful when firing against a um, an elite infantry unit. And here we finally got a waiver going on in some legionary cohorts. But this just kind of gives you an idea of what these units are capable of. So against infantry, not terribly useful. Against cavalry, which you can see the Roman bodyguard, it's taken quite a few shots. And uh, we'll go ahead and concede defeat here because it's obvious what's going to happen at that point. Let's take a look at some different pieces of... Um, artillery just to give you a, a different idea. So I'll leave the same Roman army. And I'll bring a whole bunch of Carthaginian, uh, or the giant blister actually cheaper than I thought. Huh. wonder if the Roman one's cheaper. Sure enough, it is. they made giant ballista cheaper. I still wouldn't use them unless you're going to put them into a, uh, a siege battle. Now, the, the movable ballistas are quite a bit more expensive. You can see here at 15 something each. So you're not going to be able to bring a ton of these guys but here we go, I'll bring a Ballista Spam. That's all I can bring. So I think you all are going to see through these tests why I think that artillery units are better suited to siege battles. Again, artillery can be particularly deadly versus cav, uh, because cavalry are easier to hit. Um, I usually like to put these guys in a denser formation so that their, their volleys hit uh, thicker. So I'll just let you all see this. So Romans are already within my artillery range. And they're going to move once again to try and, I guess, get around my cone of fire a little bit. But they're not going to move out of it entirely, it doesn't look like. So here comes the artillery shots. Is it good to use flaming, or is it better to use round shot? Versus cavalry, I would say they're just the standard shot every time. 
against infantry, flaming shot can be good because it has a bonus versus infantry. Just keep in mind that it's less accurate. Uh, round shot is good in the sense that it hits the ground and rolls and can potentially kill more units, but here I'll show you explosive, uh, explosive rounds. So we'll, we'll use some explosive rounds against the enemy. Now, ballista are capable of getting a pretty substantial number of kills. You can see already much higher. So in a versus infantry situation, ballista are going to be a much more appropriate um, piece of uh, artillery. They're just better suited to taking down infantry. They've got a nice arc of fire that's going to come down and actually potentially harm infantry better. Uh, whereas you saw the scorpions like to overshoot a lot. I mean, you can see it's pretty damaging, the, the amount of pain that a ballista can induce. Even one of them getting a few good hits um, can badly damage a unit and potentially change its combat effectiveness. Uh, it is an expensive unit though, so when you think about it, if I'm going to pay 1,500 talents for this unit, um, what do I need to do with it? So for instance, if I was Carthage and I brought a ballista unit, number one, I'm going to have less infantry or cavalry or skirmishers or something or a combination of the all because I paid for it. So what Roman units do I need to kill to make it useful? Or, you know, depending on who I'm playing against, whatever faction it is that you're playing against. So, you know, what units would you need to kill to make it worthwhile? So you got to consider that. Is the map wide open? Does my opponent have places to hide? Um, is my army going to be able to defend the artillery? Uh, what will I be able to do if I have to go into defensive mode? Will I still be able to win? So just consider some of that before you start using artillery. Um, but a lot of you ask me again why you don't see it in multiplayer, and it's because it's difficult to use. Um, and it doesn't usually pan out the way that you want it to. And again, here you can see with an entire spam, uh, artillery units getting quite a few kills, but uh, in this case, you know, even even if I just had a couple of them and they were able to damage some of the Roman units, I paid a lot of money, and what am I able to get for it? You know what I mean? My army is now very immobile, and I basically lose the ability to maneuver. Uh, again, not trying to say that there's no place for this online, a lot of people do like to ban it. They hate it for some reason. I don't know why artillery would get banned. It's actually a hindrance, in my opinion. But uh, in any case, there's that, so we'll concede defeat there. Are there any types of artillery that are more effective than that versus infantry? Um, I, I don't know. We could try the, um, the snake pot ballista. It's supposed to be good against infantry. See if it's really any different um, than what we just did. So let's run a test on it just real quick. This is available to Carthage, and then you have Scorpion Pop Ballista, which are available to, um... Oh man, I can't remember the factions. I think Parthia, maybe Bactria, and then you have Beehive Ballistas, available to the Romans and some of the Greek factions. This came in the uh, Beast of War DLC, by the way. It's not just a standard unit. Um, not a unit that I think you really need to go out and spend a whole bunch of money for. Entertaining, I guess, but the, uh, the animations weren't quite what we hoped. You know, I wish to see snakes, you know, hanging onto a Roman's chin or lip or eye or whatever. You don't get to see that here, unfortunately. It just kind of does a little puff of poisonous snake cloud. So you can see that there and you get to hear the noises. And it actually is pretty deadly. Um, once you, uh, deal some HP damage, now unless they've patched it, um, the snake pot ballistas are pretty deadly. And it uh, decreases melee attack and defense as well, but it doesn't last very long. So if you're expecting to use this in combat, it's not usually a very good tool. Um, I don't know why the Romans are walking slow right now, to Like, why they've chosen to slow down. I'll let my ballista just unload on them. But, I mean, the snake pot ballista does seem to be more effective versus infantry. In fact, I'm killing large numbers of Romans now. This unit's already wavering. So apparently if you want to go versus infantry, um, snake pot ballistic could potentially be useful. But you'll see it's going to do best where the enemy is blobbed. So if they're not blobbed, then don't necessarily expect the same results. Also I've got a spam of them, and a spam of them is going to be uh, more effective than just one. But wow, that is impressive how many more kills this, these snake pot ballistas are getting on the Romans. Quite impressive actually. <laughs> it's entertaining. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Definitely entertaining. Um, so yeah, we'll just uh, let you watch the rest of my snake pot. And I, for some reason, why the Romans are walking versus my snake pot poster, whereas they're running versus the other ones. Don't expect your opponents to just sit here and walk around while you unleash pots full of venomous snakes on them. It's not going to be the typical online behavior. AI behavior, maybe, because apparently the AI gets as much entertainment out of watching this this Roman snake dance as much as I do. <laughs> uh, 
Oh man. The grief, yeah, that's that's a considerable number of Romans down. Each each artillery piece has over a hundred kills, and some of them close to two hundred. And quite a bit of ammo left. Uh, of course, again, the Romans chose to walk. I'll just fast forward, see what happens with the rest of them. Watch how much the Romans allow me to kill them. Good grief, that is a serious amount of damage, more so than I thought. So, here we go. Artillery test number three, apparently. Good grief, that is a considerable amount of damage. Ammunition. Almost enough to kill the entire Roman troops because they were walking. One of our units has used all its ammunition. That, that is honestly downright impressive. If this armored legionnaire hadn't survived like that, I honestly might have won this fight. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Well, in any case, let's concede, to see, uh, concede defeat. And I just want to show you one more artillery test and what I'll try and show you is uh, a scorpion spam against a bunch of cab and elephants um, and again you're not gonna see spams online don't expect you to take spams but this is just to kind of give you an idea does this unit have any potential to give me any benefit in the end uh, again scorpions are quite cheap and that's why I'm saying I could see this unit being effective it has a quite a long range too um, I think it's yeah 350 range which means you could easily outrange other skirmishers but again Unit's not particularly useful against skirmishers, um, so that's something you're going to have to be aware of. Uh, I will bring a small line of hoplites to uh, protect my ballista just so the Romans can just straight up cab charge me here. Alright, um, and we'll give the Romans a whole bunch of cav, a bunch of legionary cav, we'll give them a couple of expensive Praetorian cav, and then we need to give them a couple of elephants. There we go, another legionary cav. Just kind of give me an idea of what scorpions can do against cavalry. I, I, I think they're definitely going to be more effective versus cavalry. I've taken them on multiple occasions against cav-heavy factions, or factions that I expect to bring elephants. Mixed results. Sometimes I get what I want out of them, sometimes I don't. And that's just because a human opponent's going to do their best to avoid that, that uh, cone of fire that you have with those units. Uh, whereas a computer player like this probably won't, won't be so hot. There we go. Let's go ahead and get things started. Here come the Romans, and they're now within scorpion range, so let's see how effective this is. So yeah, you can see actually a pretty good number of cav going down on the initial shots. And the thing is, in a real match, your opponent's not going to have nearly this much cav, and the damage that a scorpion can do to a cav unit fairly quick can be enough to turn a cav fight. Look, elephant's already going down. Uh, again, this is a spam, so don't don't necessarily expect always the same result, but you can see how quickly you're able to uh, bring down cav units. Elephant unit already completely gone. And you can see here, scorpion's firing, killing a considerable amount of cavalry. Yeah, so you can see that I'm, I'm causing quite a bit of damage to the cavalry there. All of these cavalry have taken pretty considerable damage, and again, a unit of elephants completely destroyed. The men are wavering. So, yeah. There, I mean, scorpions have real potential against um, against cavalry units. So that's just something to keep in mind there. You can see that they, they all got um, more kills quicker against that kind of thing. Not the best way for me to show it, because obviously the, the Romans are going to come straight in. If you're using it in a real battle and your opponent has to take the time to outflank you, your scorpions can continue to lay down fire. And if you look at it, I mean, again, this is a spam, but... I mean, 8 or 9 units, 10, 15 units out of a cav, you know, that, that's enough to, to make a big difference. And, I mean, some of these units didn't take any damage because they weren't targeted, but again, took down an elephant unit relatively quick. Uh, those are things to just be aware of. Elephants and cav are bigger targets, and your scorpions are going to hit them more often. Hopefully this has been a little bit of helpful information for you regarding artillery. Uh, when you're going to use it online, you definitely need to think about whether or not it serves a purpose. Anyway, Air of Carthage, signing off for now.